In this video, I'm going to replace the rear wheel speed sensor in this 2017 Hyundai Ioniq. Fortunately enough, this is the first time this car has ever been in end float garages here, but nevertheless, it now needs fixing. The dashboard is lit up like a Christmas tree. Certainly the first inkling you'll get about this problem is the ABS fault. Uh, ESP, this fault light here, auto holds, um, advanced emergency braking, uh, all of these faults come up on the display and you lose your cruise control and your regenerative braking as well. All of this makes for a fairly miserable driving experience, truth be told. It's not a very nice car to drive at all. Uh, the brakes are terrible on it and it, uh, yeah, a lot of the, the nice features this car has, such as the adaptive cru cruise control, are not working. Now, in order to confirm that the problem is the rear wheel speed sensor, you're going to need to interrogate the ECU. There are a myriad of different fault code readers that you can get. This is a fancy pants one that I bought because I work on quite a few cars and uh, I did see it as a wise investment, but you can buy the cheap Bluetooth ones and it will give you the information as well. The OBD2 socket is located in behind this cover down here. And there it is. And herein lies the information we are looking for. So right rear vehicle speed sensor, range performance intermittent, and right rear vehicle speed sensor invalid, no signal. So we're gonna replace the right rear vehicle speed sensor. Don't worry if you don't have this kind of fault code reader. There are two methods you can go about finding the information. One is just go and buy yourself one of the cheap little Bluetooth readers. It'll give you the information you need most, most likely. The other option is to bring it to a garage and just ask them to do a fault code interrogation and uh, they will give you the information you're looking for as well. And uh, there'll be a charge for it, which is a reasonable thing to expect. But uh, then you can go off with that information and decide, do you get the garage to do it or do you do it yourself? Now, by doing it yourself, you're gonna save yourself a lot of money. First things first, get it up on a jack, get a, an axle stand underneath it and get the wheel off. There is an axle stand in there as well. I wouldn't be mad enough to work underneath the car that doesn't have one. Oh, and I got a new impact one, so let's try this out. Oh, it's an animal. <laughs> Deadly. The old one would have struggled to take them off. It was junk. Right, so now let's have a look and see what we're dealing with. So now I'm gonna presume that you haven't got the diagnostic tool that I have, which allows me to put the electronic parking brake in maintenance mode. And the way I've done this in the past, and I'm just gonna explain it to you, I'm not gonna actually do it in this instance, is you take the connector off, and inside there, there are two terminals and you get a 12 volt DC supply, i.e. a 12 volt battery or a jumper pack or something along those lines, and you supply power, power to those two terminals. And what will happen is the motor will either run one way or the other. If it tightens the caliper, then you know you've gone the wrong direction. If it loosens the caliper, then you're going the right direction. So you wind it all off until it starts clicking, and then job is a good one, and you should find that your disc is free to rotate. Of course, if you do have the diagnostic tool, then just put the brakes in maintenance mode on the screen and away you go. Much simpler way of doing it, but again, you know, not everybody has those tools. So right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this brake caliper. Next, we are going to undo our two brake caliper retaining bolts. There's one here and then there is one down the bottom. So we're going to get them out. Expect that it's going to be stitched. I mean, you kind of want them to be tight, really, wouldn't you? Like, you want your brake caliper coming loose. Now is a good time, by the way, to check the condition of your rear brake pads. Being that this is an EV, there really isn't much use done on the brakes, on the, the rear brakes particularly. So uh, they're in very good order, but what can happen is when things are not used regularly, they can seize up. Tight all the way out. That was a bit of a fight, to be honest with you. But our caliper is now free and we're going to get a cable tie and just tie this up out of the way. So I'll just leave it there for the moment and we'll do just that. Actually, we could probably just leave it there. Yeah, we'll leave it there, it'll be fine. Next, we need to remove the Phillips screws in the disc. 
Incidentally, this is the same procedure you would use if you were changing the wheel bearings on the back of this car because we have to get into the wheel bearing housing. You can't take the wheel uh, speed sensor off the back of the hub without taking the hub off. Pain in the ass. Thanks for that Hyundai. With a bit of persuasion, our disc should come free. There we go. And this gives access to our hub. Now, there are four bolts holding the hub in place. Here, here, and then two on the bottom, which hopefully can be accessed through these holes. At least it did something helpful. And uh, that will allow us to take our hub off. These are 12 mil bolts. And hopefully we can send a few ugga duggas. There we go. I was hoping we wouldn't have to take off our brake backing plate, but it seems we will, so let's get it off. That allows us then to take the hub off the hub carrier. Where's the hub and hub carrier come off? This is one piece. Anyway, right, let's tap that. There we go. And that comes off now as well giving us our hub with a wheel speed sensor in the back. What a pain in the butt. Eagle eyed viewers amongst you will notice that we're now on the workbench. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a little mark with a center punch just here, marking where the connector is to be located. I'm not sure how accurate you need to be, but it's better to be accurate than to not be when you're not sure. So, right, so that's that sorted out. So next thing we need to do is we need to get this out of this. So let's have a think about this. So I am going to use this old chisel to try and just come up at an angle with this, which is already making a little bit of headway, which is great. I'm just gonna work our way around. And that will allow us to take this off. The rest of the gubbin stays inside. It's all looking nice and clean. And this little bugger here is what's causing me all my problems. So this is the bit we're going to change. I believe it's a Hall Effect sensor. The local motor factors wanted to sell me the entire hub assembly with the speed sensor already installed at the back of it. It's all that was available to them. So they said to me that, yeah, they're probably available online separately. So uh, said to me that that's probably the best way to go. In fairness to the motor factors, they were quite honest that way, so I can't fault them. So yes, they were right. I was able to buy this Febby unit, which should be decent quality. I've always found Febby Bilstein to be good quality stuff. So this is the sensor without all of the bearing and everything like that as well. If you're replacing the wheel bearing, the best thing to do is just buy the whole hub assembly with the wheel speed sensor, the whole shebang, and just bolt it back in and away you go. You're not pressing bearings or anything like that. They're really not that, that expensive, all things considered. So let's get this uh, wheel speed sensor installed. So here we have it. New sensor. Line up our dimples that we made earlier on, which is over here. And just press it home. I'm a little bit reluctant to hit it with a hammer now, to be honest, which is so. Uh, might have to give it a couple of light taps, just to make, make sure we do it around the shoulder here. So uh, let's just get a little drift or something like that to do that with. I'm going to be honest, it was a bit of a bugger to try and get this thing to go down straight. So what I actually did was I used very light pressure in a hydraulic press I have in the garage to push it down. But uh, really the only other option is just to go around it very gently and just tap it down and eventually you'll get it. But uh, yeah, that was a bit of a battle. So um, the other thing you could probably do is if you were to put the, the whole assembly like that in the vise and clamp it down. But just go easy. It's only plastic, folks. OK, so don't uh, don't crack the plastic. Okay, so that's uh, that's good enough for the purposes of this exercise. Right, let's get it back in the car. Turns out you don't actually need to remove the brake backing plate, but uh, anyway, I did. So we have to bolt this back on first. And 
Okay. And now we can take this assembly. Put it over like this. Just gonna and tap that down a little bit there with a the hammer. Okay, so we'll just get this offered back up here. So it's just one bolt in just to keep it in place till I get the rest of them. Because I'm not entirely trusting of power tools, I'm just gonna throw a ratchet on them, make sure they're fully tight. And they seem to be. That's the job. Okay. Now we get a brake caliper back on. Well, our disc first of all, I suppose would be a help. We get our disc back on and then a brake caliper. Only one way these can go. Alright. These are just for keeping the disc in place when you're changing the pads. Really they're not entirely necessary. The wheel will do that anyway when you have it on. But uh, it's just for locating purposes, I suppose you could say. The sobering thought for you is that those those four bolts, those four 12 mil bolts have tightened there, are the only thing keeping the entire hub disc brake assembly on the car. So these five uh, big uh, 19 mil nuts and everything like that are a little redundant because if they break, the thing is coming off anyway. Right, now to get our caliper back on, and I'm going to put a little bit of thread locker on these bolts. Because thread locker will do two things for us. One is, it will lubricate the threads as we're tightening it, and it'll stop them from coming loose after the fact. So, because I don't want to put grease on these threads. Blue lock tight now, not red, because uh, I do want to be able to actually do a job on the brakes at some point or another on this car when the time, when the time arises. <laughs> Do we get the old pressure washer at the uh, inner arches on this car? This car gets driven hard and put away wet. It doesn't get much love, I can assure you. That's why I have this because I can. It means I can lavish the attention on the classic cars and just drive this in and out of work and the winter and everything like that as well. The heaters are very good. Actually, despite this problem, it's actually proven to be quite a reliable car. I haven't had any other issues with it so far. And being electric, I haven't even had to service the bloody thing. And that is what I want from a, my daily runabout. Last thing to do is to put our two electrical connectors back on. And I do realise I forgot to mention to you to disconnect that. But if you've gotten this far, I'm sure you figured that bit out for yourself. Now, when you plug this back in again and you apply the, the parking brake, the caliper should find its own position again. I'm going to take it out of maintenance mode, but if you have done it the way of just applying power to it, once you've kind of cycled the, the parking brake a couple of times, it should all come good. If it doesn't, you may need to reset a couple of fault codes, but um, either way, even if it means bringing it to a garage, you just get them to reset the fault code, you're still quids in because this job is going to cost you a few a few hundred quid in the garage, I suppose. I mean, the thing is, they're going to charge you for the full hub. They're not going to just get the sensor. They're going to get whatever the motor factor can provide. Uh, they're going to charge you for maybe three hours labor and all this carry on. So I'd say, I, I would fully expect you to be paying 300 quid plus to get this uh, to get this job done. So anyway, that's that's a saving right there. Now that's, that's on and that connector there is on. They're all sorted, so let's get our wheel back on and take it out of maintenance mode, take it for a drive, make sure those fault codes clear, and hopefully that job is a good one. I like the fact that Hyundai give you little chrome nuts instead of these bloody plastic covers that you have to take off before removing the uh, the, the nut. So anyway, let's send the Ugga Duggas. This has a, a mode where it basically just drives them in tight them then turns off. So, uh, yeah. Job's a good one, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so I am in the mode for brake pad change mode, so I'm gonna reapply the parking brake.
Jobs are good on. Press OK. Right, OK, so cancel that. And we're going to go back to our uh, auto scan. We're going to go auto scan. Now, the default calls are probably still standing, so they may will they may well come back up. We'll go and clear DTCs. Yeah, see, already we've got one there. So we'll wait until that finishes. Clear default codes and then we will take it out for a drive and see how it performs. I know I'm messing here, but it turns out you can actually test the vehicle engine sound system. Now, what engine have you ever heard that sounds like this? What the hell? I'd, I'd sooner have it sound like the bloody car out of the Jetsons or something like that than that carry on. Anyway, enough pricking around. Let's clear the fault codes. We have parking brake, which is understood. Electronic stability program, active hydraulic booster. Smart cruise control, autonomous emergency braking vehicle control system, low DC to DC converter, all of that jazz. Clear DTCs, clearing. And let's see if they go off our dashboard as well. Grant, right, okay, so now, next thing to do is to take it for a drive and see if it behaves itself. So confident am I that I have removed the diagnostic uh, communication piece from the car and put the cover back on. And we're going to go for a drive and I'll let you know how we get on, because uh, you're not going to see a damn thing when I, because <laughs> it's the middle of the night now. Well, I'm pleased to report that that fix was a complete success and the car is back to driving perfectly again, which is fantastic. So uh, all things considered, not the biggest job in the world. It's all spanners and bolts and everything like that. If you have a few tools at home and that and a bit of time and patience, you can do it. It's just uh, the only thing that's a bit of a faff is that uh, electric parking brake. But other than that, yeah, very achievable at home. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, comments or observations, or you've done the job yourself, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know what your opinions are on it. And I will see you in a future video. Thanks very much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button before you go. I really do appreciate it. And I'll chat to you soon. Fault code zero. That's the job.